In this video, I wanna share one of the biggest things that I think should be done when a system has low refrigerant that a lot of technicians are not doing. But before we do go into what that step is, I wanna go through a couple scenarios when you're low on refrigerant and why I think this step is so important. So first, when a system is deemed as having low refrigerant by a technician, in my opinion, he should be offering you a few options. Now, he may say to you, hey, there's a few options here, but I'm leaning towards this one, or I only will do this one. You have other options, but this is the only one I'm going to do. And if you want one of the other options, I think you need to call someone else for this reason or that reason. And that's okay, nothing wrong with that. They may have their reasons for saying that. In the old days, we used to have what, what we called a charge and go, right? So you would charge the system and hope for the best was the kind of deal. In my experience, those days have kind of ended, right? Refrigerant has gotten so expensive. Most homeowners want to know why is it low, if there's a leak, what's leaking, what's the repair cost, et cetera. But I would still say that if you did go with a charge and go, this step that I'm talking about that we're gonna get to in just a moment should still be done. So in addition to charge and go, this step should be done, right? And other options include if you know there's a leak, then you could attempt to find that leak with a device that we call a sniffer in our trade. It's essentially a leak detection tool that senses refrigerant where it's leaking from. There's other ways to find leaks such as pressurizing the system and going around with what we call bubbles and finding the leak that way. If you pressurize it, you can also sometimes find leaks that just by using your ear, you know, you just hear that leak and then you can narrow it down and say, here's where that leak is located. And there's actually a whole array of ways to find refrigerant leaks. But the thing that I would just wanna point out is even in those situations, I think you should be doing the step that we're gonna reveal in just a moment. I hope it's okay that I'm being a little mysterious on what that step is, but I'm trying to paint you a picture here. So you've got charge and goes, and you've got leak find and repairs. And then finally, one of the last options, if you were to go down this road, you might say, hey, I've got an older system, or I've had leaks before, I'm tired of putting money into this system, whatever the reason is, you may replace the system. And that's really the only scenario I can think of that you shouldn't do the step that I'm about to talk about. But I think a big percentage of the time, if you've got a system under warranty, you've got a system that's not under warranty, but still in good condition, you've taken care of it, you're trying to get as much life out of that system as possible, whatever those scenarios are, and you're going to repair it or charge it or whatever, you should be doing this step. And here's what it is. I think that adding HVAC UV dye to the system is not done enough. And that might be very controversial. There's a lot of guys that feel strongly one way or the other about dye in the system. But the bottom line is when you've got a leak in that system, if you find and repair a leak, there's nothing saying that that was the only leak in that system. Now, a good technician should repair the leak, pressurize the system, do a good vacuum using a micrometer, and if they do all of those things properly, hypothetically, there should be no other leaks. I can't tell you how many times I've seen in this trade, guys, couldn't find the leak and they'll blame it on the Schrader cores over and over and over. And of course the homeowner's getting frustrated. They're throwing money at this system only to find out those cores are leaking again. And there's just so much crap that people deal with. It's not always the technician's fault. It's not always the option that the homeowner selected. So it's not their fault always. It's just an ugly situation sometimes. And in all of those situations, I think if you were to add the dye, then you would get to the bottom of a lot of these problems, right? So if you add the dye and then there is a future issue, you can figure out where is this actually leaking from? There's no more guessing. There's dye in that system. It's now leaked out. We can find out where it's leaking from and here's our problem, or problems, plural. I'll admit that the guy that I learned under was not a fan of it. He hated it. He hated when he had to work on a system that had it in it. He always would get it on his hands or get it on his tools, his gauges. He was just not a happy camper about it. Full disclaimer, I didn't use it for the longest time. The guy that I learned under didn't use it. As I learned this trade and started my own business years later, 
I still didn't do it. And it took a little bit of time, especially when I found out that a lot of manufacturers will still honor warranties, even though you added dye to the system. A lot of manufacturers are okay with it as long as you're doing it properly. So that way you are making good long-term fixes, good long-term decisions. I think it's the one step I wish all HVAC techs would get on board with. I know it's sometimes a pain in the butt to deal with, but in almost every situation, and I'll say it again, in almost every situation, whether it was a leak find and repair, whether it was a sniffer that found the leak, whether it was a charge and go, whether they even used a product like leak seal to hopefully fix a small leak, sort of like fix a flat in a tire, whatever the scenario is, adding dye to that system on the back end, making that the last step in the entire process, adding that dye in there is the in my opinion, best long-term step. It's the step that should be added to all others. Unless you're doing a brand new system and everything's going to be installed properly, you may not need to add dye there, but just about every other step. I would even say if you've had a failure of some type, so if you had, say, a compressor that's failed, and now you're going to replace the compressor, you're going to replace the filter dryer, sometimes adding filter dryers, depending on the scenario, but you're going to do a number of things. You're going to hopefully put new virgin clean refrigerant back in that system and then last but not least even if you weren't going to add any sort of lubricant or one of these ac renew or boost juice type products to the system if nothing else add some dye in there so that way if there is an issue and now you've got to come back out say six months later you find out why the compressor did fail because it was leaking refrigerant and the low pressure switch failed and it didn't do what it was supposed to and now i've got to find the leak it wouldn't be that big of a deal if you added dye on that first trip adding that step on all of these scenarios is going to allow for a happier customer, a happier you, a happy consumer, if you're a consumer or a homeowner watching this, you're gonna be the one that ends up being happier at the end of the day if that step is added to almost every scenario. So here's what I'm gonna do. If you are in that situation, hopefully you've got a professional that's already doing that or at least thinking of it, considering it, talking to you about it. But regardless, there's a product out there that we used multiple times at my company. It's very easy to install. You screw it on the service ports, push a button, remove it from the service ports and you're done. There's no special tools. There's no crazy things to do it. The flow of refrigerant actually just takes the product out of the tube when you push the button and it's very easy to work with. Little disclaimer, in my opinion, I think a professional should still be the one to install the product. But either way, it is easy. Unlike some of the other products out there that are, in my opinion, somewhat challenging. It's a multi-step process involving sometimes special tools, adding down to that system. This product allows you to do it. It's more user-friendly. And I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. That said, what are your thoughts? Is this a step that you think has been missed in the past? You think it should have been done and you continue to have issues over and over and adding dye would have relieved that. I'd love to hear about that in the comment section down below. Maybe you think I'm wrong and you'd like to comment about that. Love to hear it. I wanted to take a quick break and tell you about something I'm doing outside of educating folks on our YouTube channel. If you're a service professional of any type, you don't have to be an HVAC, I want to invite you to check out our growth groups at newhvacguide.com. They are full of other pros like you that are wanting to grow. You can share strategies, overcome challenges, and unlock your full potential with the supportive community of your peers. Learn from industry experts and proven business tactics tailored specifically for service businesses. The amount of information that I've gotten out of this has been unparalleled value. I mean, I've learned so much from the other guys in the group, what to do, sometimes what not to do. It's helped inspire me. I'm really looking forward to what the future holds with it as my company grows and I grow as a person on this call. Check out the description or the chat for the link. See you soon. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I talk about some of the biggest secrets with heat pumps. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.